Lizzie with Longestons Gamers and today I'm going to be talking to you about Frosthaven. So this is not going to be a how to play or how to play remotely. If you want to know how to play remotely we do have a Gloomhaven which this is a very similar concept so you can go watch that one. This will be just what I think about it. Uh, about spoilers I will try to be minor spoilers only. Yours and my definition of minor might vary so if you don't want spoilers or you don't want to be spoiled on specific things i uh, don't watch this video but with all that said i have played so much of this gloomhaven um i have played through the main campaign i played through a whole bunch of the scenarios i have played all the characters minus three of the starting characters because my game group actually wants to play this game together and well those are the three that we want to play together so i kind of left those untouched but I have gone through everything and I just, well, not everything, everything. I haven't gone through some of the scenarios that I got locked out of, for instance. So during this campaign, you have choices to make and one choice will lead you down this path and another will lead you down this path. And so it's interesting that I, when I was finished with the main campaign, even doing a ton of side quests, According to the um, Fort Teller, which is the app that I use, which is awesome if you want to do it, but it reads the wording and whatnot. And so it said that I was 42% complete done with all the scenarios when I was done with the main storyline, even with doing a ton of the ones. Now it's closer to 60%, but still, there's still a lot to do even after you finish the main campaign. So what do I think about Frosthaven? How does it compare to Gloomhaven? Frosthaven is Gloomhaven on steroids. No joke. Like, this is a fantastic game. Gloomhaven had the issue of, okay, I'm going to go in, I'm going to fight these baddies. The goal is to just kill all of them. Okay, do that time and time and time again. Awesome. Love the game. But that goal does get a little repetitive. That was my main issue with Gloomhaven. Frosthaven, on the other hand, while it does have, you know, go in, kill the baddies and whatnot, it has variations. So sometimes you open a room and you have to attack this other thing before you can even attack the monsters because you can't damage them. So you have to go to the far end of the room to attack this other thing, get rid of that. Then you can attack the monsters all while they are beating up on you and you're going, oh goodness gracious, I need to get my summons out to be a little bit of buffers. And then there's also ones that like you have to like, drag something, like you have to take something and you have to move it around and you have to like drag it around. So you have to give up an action to be able to move it. But which action do you give up? And I really need to fight this body. I need to move to fight this monster. Is it worth giving up that to be able to move this? Because the winning condition is moving it. But if I lose because I die, if I get down to zero health, then the scenario is also lost. So trying to decide when to do which action was really interesting on that. Uh, but yeah, so scenarios, goals, varied. Still a lot of kill this person, kill that person. Um a lot of those so you pretty much had to kill all the enemies and there were some of those as well but there were some variations and uh, more variations than gloomhaven which kept it fresh kept it interesting some had rules this big to explain all the differences which got a little annoying for a couple scenarios but it was so worth it all the extra rules overhead which, speaking of rules overhead, so Gloomhaven, get your character. You do its goal, it retires, la di da di da Happy, happy joy. Frosthaven, you have the outpost phase. You have time passing. I will show you, do I have one handy that I can show you? Yes, I do. I do have it right here. Um, I actually created a scenario guide because it's the map one that shows and you break the window out shows you overall but then you have five things versus this you could go in through and see uh if you have it unlocked or not but this is your time tracking so this is your campaign sheet 
So every scenario, most of the time, there are linked scenarios that make it so you don't have to, but after you do a scenario, you will pass time. So you cross this. There's a little note here, like there is on this one. Oh, you can see it a little bit better right here. So yeah, so you would read that before you cross it off. Sometimes you handwrite them in. It makes it so that, you know, you might encounter someone, you make a decision, you write a number in in six weeks from now, because every time is a week. So your decision impacts you six weeks in the future. And it's interesting how that happens. But then you have an outpost event and good, bad, you can build stuff up. You can get hit and beat and have some issues with some enemies. And then you can go on to the um, building phase where the buildings have different things you can do. So you might be able to buy some wood or you might be able to turn some wood into gold. Or as this is not a big one for those who know Gloomhaven, you can upgrade your cards. So you can take a card and it'll have a little square and that means that you could do a plus one or a jump. So you can put a little plus one. So you were attacking for two. Now you're attacking for three. So you can do those. And then you can harvest uh, some herbs if you plant that. Or if you do that. Because like each time you retire, you want to retire as early as possible, pretty much. Like you're not going to get in love with your character and carry it all the way through. You're going to fall in love with your character and go, oh man, but what will retiring you bring to my community? You can always visit your characters later on. Like the Blink Blade, I got uh, him at the very beginning. Six scenarios, six scenarios. He was retired. I accidentally retired him. I had a goal that was with looting and there was only one card in the entire deck that I could not loot. And I looted that card. So six scenarios in, I'm retiring a character already. But then, oh my goodness, I can un un unlock this building that I could build. Because that's how you unlock the buildings. Through your retirements. And it's like, oh my goodness, and this building does this thing. And oh, that is so cool. And then the retirement goal makes sense. So, you know, in Gloomhaven, your retirement goal was linked to a character. So if you had this retirement goal and you achieved it, then that character is unlocked. That doesn't happen in this one, but the retirement goal is linked to how the new character will play, sort of. Versus the retirement goal is linked somewhat to what building you're going to get to unlock. And it is so cool! Why, ah, it's getting to see, oh, that is why we were focused on this aspect of the game. That explains it. And now we're not only going to be able to focus on that for every other character that we play. Now it'll be improved. And now we get something cool also that we can build in our, you know, community. We can make our community better. We can build it up. We can you know, get more prosperity because, you know, getting a bigger community gets you more prosperity. Sometimes builds morale, which speaking of, the um, tip, if you are going to be building and you're building a lot, I would not recommend it when the or the morale hit is two. There comes a time that it reduces to one and you will know when that time happens and then build more. The only thing that I would do for two is if it was necessary. So if I needed two different things, it's like you could build a ship, a sled, and a, uh, wait, a boat, a sled, ship. Oh, climbing gear. That's the other one. So climbing gear, boat, and a sled. So you could build those three and you have to have those for some of the scenarios. So you might really have to build that one if the next scenario you do requires it, which I wouldn't build them before that point, because, you know, if you're not going to use it, what's the point of having it kind of thing? Uh, so definitely I would limit it to two or to one building when it was still two mor morale. When it was reduced to one morale loss, that wasn't too bad because, you know, then I could build another building and it was only morale. And at that point, my morale was pretty high anyways. 
So losing one wouldn't negate it because your morale is also the basis for your defense. So if you only have 14 morale and you would need to lose one or two, that would knock you all the way down to 10 defense instead of 15. So you kind of have to balance that. But if you're way up on 20, you can lose a morale and then hopefully get it back before your next you know week goes on. So I do really like that. And I do like that you can get these soldiers. If you do have an attack, you can build up these soldiers and they can help you. They give you advantage and they give you additional defense as well. Uh, what you'll see when you do your Frost Haven is there's uh, fences that you can build and it says plus one defense. You can build, you know, you can build one or two when you're at level one prosperity, which is where you start. And then the more prosperity you get, the more you can build. And each one of those gets you another five defense, which is huge. So that is awesome. That combined with the soldiers, but those soldiers are hard to get sometimes, especially starting out, which starting out do scenario zero. Just even if you are a Gloomhaven whiz, even if you know Gloomhaven left, right, up, down and center, just do scenario zero. Even if you find it super easy, you'll get some resources. Resources are tight early on, like very, very tight. Once your community builds and builds and builds, it gets easier. But that very beginning, just do scenario zero so that you can get a few more resources. You'll appreciate it later on. Uh, okay, so yeah, so we've done that. Uh, the thing with um, characters, they are a very unique feeling compared to Gloomhaven. They do feel somewhat similar to some of the um, Crimson Scales ones, which Crimson Scales is a fan-made expansion for Gloomhaven that also just had its expansion released or is delivering now. So there's an expansion for an expansion, which is pretty cool in the whole Gloomhaven world, which keep your eye out for that video. That is a cool one too. Uh, but anyways, so there are some similarities and you kind of wonder, okay, was this inspiration for Crimson Scales the inspiration for this character or vice versa? Like which one came first? Like which inspiration came first? Very interesting, but they're definitely very good characters they make sense for the most part. There's a few weirdness with some of them and you do have your preferred play style. Like I have mine. I, it was a controllable retirement. And yes, I said retire as early as possible. Even if you get one that unlock a scenario and follow it till the end, even if that's what you get on the very first one, go ahead and play that scenario. Trust me, it'll take a time for retirement. It's not like Gloomhaven where you do the scenario and it's retired in two scenarios. That's not the way it works. So just do that scenario and then you can control when you do a final one. But my favorite one to play was a controllable scenario. So I kept this one all the way to level nine. You know, I actually got over a thousand experience points with this character. Loved playing her. Absolutely adored her play style. But I decided, you know what, I need to retire her. Not that I could build that building because guess what? After a certain number of retirements, the buildings are all built and then something else is achieved. But it's like, I just want, I'm not developing my character anymore. I have all the enhancements I can do. Prosperity's at level nine. I can only, you know, do nine cards, which I sleep all my cards. So no spoilers. But so like you have, you know, can only upgrade nine of the cars. So all of those are upgraded. Every last one of the upgrade possibles is going, oh, well, I'm not really developing. I'm not really experiencing anything new with her. So I think I'm going to go ahead and finish her storyline so that way I can get a new character to play. So, I mean, there is some of that. So like if you do like, find a character that you absolutely love, you could visit its cousin. Like I had said, you know, earlier and didn't finish that train of thought. But yeah, but you could like, you could always bring a character back. Like you could bring, for instance, I could always bring a Blink Blade back, but I always, I want to play someone I haven't played yet. So I always bring out someone new, but if you've already gotten all your upgrade stickers, you know, on all the cards, when the cousin comes back, you have even cooler cards to start out with, which is more fun, right? So yeah, but I just, I really love that. 
and I really, I really love some of the characters. Some of them, one of them I was very, very happy when that one retired. Did not enjoy it. Another one I did not enjoy and it was after I had built all the buildings. So I'm going, okay, there's really not a huge point for me doing this retirement. So I'm just going to go ahead and change out the character to a different character. So there was a couple that I didn't enjoy playing, but someone else might. It was just wasn't my preferred style. Um, okay. Sorry, just looking through my notes to make sure. Uh, there is the thing with prosperity. So prosperity was gained differently in Gloomhaven and Frosthaven. Some of it was a little random in Gloomhaven. There are a lot more randomness in Frosthaven. And pretty much any time you build a building, you're upping your prosperity. So build your buildings, increase your prosperity, get cooler stuff just so that you can get more and bring in characters at a higher level because it kind of hurts to go from a level nine character to a level one character. And that it's kind of like, oh man, I used to be able to do such cool things. Now I'm just going, dink, dink. I want to start, you know, a little bit higher. Granted, it was Gloomhaven. You could start whatever prosperity level. So if you were prosperity level five, you could start your characters on level five. Prosperity nine, <laughs> you were coming in, but then you didn't get a chance to get to know your character. So Frosthaven, you could start it at half of your prosperity rounded up. So if your prosperity was level five, then you could start at a level three because you know, half of five is two and a half, three. Uh, so then you can start at three, you get a few cool cards to, you know, add in a few of those upgrades, but then you still get to really know your character. You get to develop feelings for them. But here's the thing, characters last in uh, Frosthaven, I'm finding like 12, 12 to 20 times somewhere in that range is the average. So you don't get a whole lot of time with them. You get like what, a couple years or a couple seasons, like a summer, winter. I mean, each season is 10 weeks. So you, you get a full year with them actually. A little bit more than that, a little bit less than that. So you don't always get really deeply invested into that one particular character. Exceptions happen, but you do kind of move on fairly quickly to the point that it's like going, I really want to revisit that character. So like once I get done with this, the campaign, I'm like, okay, I'm going to restart it. But oh, I haven't played this other one. So I want to play these other ones. So now, other than those three that I'm not playing until I play with my game group, I think I'm going to visit the Blink Blade first because I never really got to get to know him at all. And then there's some of the other ones. I might bring out my favorite one, even though there's no development left on her. But hey, I really like her play style. Uh, but so far, so some of the negatives. I did mention this a little bit. So prosperity and morale can be based very much on making the right decision. So you get events, you get road events, you get your outpost events. Sometimes making decision A gets you a prosperity. Sometimes decision B gets you to morale and there doesn't seem to be any real clear, okay, this is the obviously correct solution. So this is obviously the one I'm going to do. So you like, you'll do it. Okay, well I'll do this. Turn it over and be like, oh, I just lost 20 gold and I could have gotten to prosperity. That stings a little bit. It's like going, but uh, I was trying to make the right decision and obviously I chose wrong. Oh, there are some interesting ones where you kind of gamble a bit. That ones were interesting, but it didn't affect your prosperity or it, you gambled on gold essentially. Eh, money in Frost Haven's not a huge commodity except for pretty much upgrading your cards is the big reason why you'll use gold. You'll mainly do crafting items, which is combining the, you know, the wood, the hide, the metal that you get through it, and also the um, potions, which I'm not going to show you my potions, but there's this cool thing. Ooh. This is, has, the other side has, you know, the potions. So you can get, combine these two ingredients and unlock this little thing that you will rip off and it will tell you a number and, you know, it might say something, something potion, and it'll tell you a number and you can go to the thing, your where you keep all of your cards, grab out that potion. You get to keep one, giving it to whoever you want. So if it's a potion that's really good for 
character across, you know, with your playmate, you can give it to them or you can keep it yourself because you know what? You took the effort of potion of making, mixing that potion. You deserve to keep that potion, right? Right. But anyway, so like that, I find this really cool. And then later on you can do three herbs together to make potions. And I just, I found this really a cool asset and it makes it so that, okay, those are the, my favorite ones. So I'm just going to make a little note on here that when I get a new character, because once you get a new character, you start out, you know, with, you don't have anything to be able to craft. You can't craft, you know, armor or anything. You can buy it. You do start with some gold, but you don't come, back, come with the ability to turn wood into a sword or anything like that. But there is community herbs. So people can, well, I do community based. Whenever someone finds an herb, it goes to the community. I do keep um, the other resources separate until retirement. And then they're like, okay, I'm retiring. Here's my donation. Uh, but they can make some herbs. That way you can start with some potions to really help you out there. And the more you, you uh, mix together, the more potions you get to know. And I find that a really cool thing. Um, but anyways, we're talking about negatives, right? I'm sorry. I really love this game. I do. Um, so there are another negative would be the random sightings. So there are one kind of sort of storyline, but not exactly storyline to the game where you kind of want to spot some stuff and you have to spot five of these, I think. And you will make a decision on a road event or in a scenario or something, and it will result in you coming across it. So you might play a scenario and make the wrong decision and never come across what you need to come across to be able to complete this, which has a cool little end, little bump, which is really cool. I'm talking about the, um, I want to say Brexit or Bremix. Bremit? you'll see what I mean. So you like, we'll see paths and you might see something you might not. I just, I kind of wish that it was like a guaranteed thing because it's kind of cool. But yeah, it's like, ah, uh, I, 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 I had to look online to, cause I was missing one and turns out I made a wrong turn in a scenario. So I had to go replay that scenario so that I could find this path. Otherwise, I would never have unlocked it. So I did play a scenario that I didn't, shouldn't have had to replay, you know. I'd already beaten it. I wasn't playing with, you know, a new campaign. So it was just like, eh, that left kind of a bad taste in my mouth. And twice. So what I do for setup is I will bring out the card, the tiles. I will go, so we have, I'm trying to turn to scenario zero. So you get this, you get, you know, the map layouts, you get what you need and you set up your loot deck. I do all of this because here's the thing. Each scenario is really different sometimes. So in Gloomhaven, you would upgrade your cards and you would get your deck. You would be deck building your, your character. You wouldn't trade those cards out very often at all very often at all. Frosthaven, you're going, okay, so this scenario is more focused on this. Okay, I really need that one specific card that is really good in this one specific, you know, situation. Otherwise, we will not win this game. And that does mean that sometimes some combinations of characters just don't mesh well. And then you're struggling and really struggling with every scenario you're doing because characters don't balance each other out well. So I did look somewhat on the back of the characters. They have, I'm going to try to, so they have like this melee ranged whatnot. And so like you can see what they're good at right there. And you can also see their complexity and whatnot. So I would try to combine, you know, strengths and weaknesses and try to, when I would develop a new character, I would try to find one that kind of had the same you know, range of abilities. So that way the team would still be well off. I did play this three-handed solo. So I did have that ability of just, ah, 
I'm going to, you know, play this one and I got to play all three. So it wasn't like, oh, if it was a bad one, it left a bad taste in my mouth or anything. But so I set up the scenarios like that. Go through all the work of going, okay, I'm going to do these for this one. And I'm going to do these cards for this one. And I'm going to do this one for these ones. And then read the uh, road event. And I have to completely set up a new scenario. Happened to me twice. I was so frustrated both times because I don't want to have to pivot like that. I want to be able to just do the scenario I set up, pulled out everything for because this is no easy setup either, but it wasn't so frequent that I would remember to, you know, get in the habit of doing the road event before everything because, you know, you set it up, you have the road event and then you go. That's the way I always do it. And yeah, no, that's might not be the best. You might want to do your road event, set it up and then go because otherwise you might get really frustrated because it's like, okay, how often can that really happen? Oh, it happened twice. Granted, I've played 90 something scenarios, I think. Uh, I'd have to double check the app, but I've played a lot of scenarios. So the, you know, that, that, that happening is kind of like, oh, okay, two out of 90, that's not really that much, but it's still very aggravating and very memorable. Ah, uh, so though that, and there is on this and on your uh, character sheets, you are erasing your supplies a lot. You're getting new ones. Every campaign, you're getting something new. Every outpost phase, you might get some other stuff. So you are erasing this to the point that I actually erased a hole in my paper. So you might want to bear that in mind. Get used to that. This is not going to look pretty. Use pencil. Pencil. Uh, but yeah, so just bear that in mind. Um, and then there is, so this is the continuation of Gloomhaven. You have played Gloomhaven. You have played Forgotten Circles. You are now ready for Frosthaven. You might have played Crimson Scales in the middle of that too. But for those of us that haven't had a consistent ability to play because of game group issues, and we really want to play this because, well, one, it's new. It's exciting. And... I had started Gloomhaven with my friends and I want to finish that with my friends, right? This, well, I will go through it with them. I didn't start it with them. I could play through it all by myself and then enjoy it with them as well. There is a scenario or a road event or something that unlocks, there is a scenario specifically that unlocks only if you've completed Forgotten Circles. So you've had to go through Gloomhaven, you've had to complete Forgotten Circles to be able to unlock this scenario. Granted, it didn't unlock anything super amazing at the end of it. You didn't achieve anything super amazing. Of course, I did play it. Obviously, it's my game. I can choose to break the rule and say, yeah, I've played Forgotten Circles because, well, let's face it, it's going to be years probably until I get that completed. And it was, yeah, I think it was a road event. And that road event would have gone away. I wouldn't have had a chance of being able to play that again. So it's like going, okay, so I'm going to definitely just play that. So just keep that in mind. You might just go, okay, let's just say we completed it just so that we can get this scenario. Um, and then there was one, one uh, scenario that I played had 23 different sections in that section book. You know, when you, so you set it up, you have the thing, and then when you unlock this, you get to open, or you get to go to section 5.3. So you go to section, or page 5, you read 5.3, you know, halfway down. 23 of those different ones. That was a lot, and that was frustrating. So, like, that was one of the kind of negative ones I get. So, like, sometimes the scenarios were awesome, and they flowed really well, and I got to do some different things. Sometimes it was like clunky, and 23 was just way, way, way too many to do. That one was a rough one, and I lost that scenario, but I did not replay it. I failed upwards. <laughs> that was not a fun one. Um, But yeah, that's what all I have to talk about. Oh, except the puzzles. 
So, in order to complete this game, you in the main storyline, you have to complete some puzzles. I had to go online for some of them. Thankfully, someone out there is smarter than me and was able to figure these out. Even with their hints, I could not figure a couple of these out. And I looked at it and I was like, okay, I have definitely done these, so I should be able to figure this one out. But no. Clearly, I'm not as smart as I think I am. But anyways, final end, you know, what it should be would be online. So if you are struggling with them, definitely look online if you really want to. Because guess what? In order to unlock the scenarios you need to be able to complete the campaign, you gotta complete the puzzles. You just have to. It is part of the entire story. So, you definitely got to work through that and decide if you want to do it. Now, I will say I have enjoyed doing the puzzles. Some of them, figuring them out were really cool. Figuring out the different ways that they brought the how to point you to what section in the section book you would read was cool. I enjoyed them. Just some of them were really, really difficult. And you pretty much need to experience everything everything in the game to be able to figure them out so keep, be, keep that in mind do your puzzles don't wait on them just do them um but anyways uh so i will say oh sorry had something underneath the table i will say i actually liked the unfettered campaign it's the green one uh the green color of campaign that was probably my favorite storyline i really enjoyed what that offered I liked the other, I, yeah, the other two, I would say, would be uh, the main storylines. The, the th there's three different ones, I feel. Um, but yeah, the unfettered one, I really enjoyed. The other, I liked them, but that one just offered some variety that I didn't really see in Gloomhaven. The other ones, like, yes, they were set in the Frosthaven world, but they felt kind of similar but the unfettered one was really cool, provided some really interesting. So I would definitely recommend doing the unfettered as soon as you can, because oh my goodness, it was so much fun. But that is it on that one. Okay, so uh, we went over my favorite one. Um, yes. So yeah, so last reminder, few tips start doing your retirements as early as possible you're going to want to build up your community i know you want to get attached to your characters you want to love them you're used to gloomhaven you're used to loving your characters and really developing a true relationship retire just retire them see what that adds to the community and you know what if you want to do something with that character more come back to them later you can always refresh the character you can bring back their cousin but so I would definitely recommend starting the retirements as early as you can, focusing on them as much as you can. Um, and then don't build the bo boat, climbing gear, or shed or sled before you absolutely need them. Even if that does result in you doing two building actions, I don't think you ever need two of those for one scenario, at least not that I saw. Um, but you might really need to build a different building and need to build the shed sled. Oh my goodness. So there might be a cause, but I would definitely recommend only building one building at a time until the morale level, you know, drops. And do scenario zero. I cannot tell you how important it is to get resources. You need to be looting in this game. You need to get your resources. Do scenario zero. Save yourself a little bit of headache by getting your resources early. It'll help, I promise. Um, but yeah, and yes, when you do unlock the ability to build a building, try to build that building as early as possible because it provides some really cool stuff. Every building is cool. Even if it doesn't seem cool, it's cool. Just keep building. I promise you it will be worth it. All of them. Cool. Um, Yes. I, I think that's it. So I, uh, in case you couldn't tell, I love this game. 
It is a 10 out of 10 for me. It is fabulous. I keep wanting to play it. I want to reset it to play with my friends. So that way we can play together starting from scratch. Granted, they're going to get a few cousins coming over and helping them out because I'm not taking those stickers off. Those are on there. Uh, so yeah, so definitely 10 out of 10. I highly recommend this game if you love the system. How do you know if you love the system? Play Gloomhaven. Play Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion first. It will teach you how to play the game. I wish that's how I learned because it is a really good teaching you by, you know, holding your hand and, you know, walking with you, teaching you to walk and then letting you, you know, walk out in front of and then letting you run. That's what Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion does. It teaches you the core and it, you know, helps you grow. So I would highly recommend if you haven't started in any of these, Jaws of the Lion, most definitely, hands down. You do feel the need to jump right into this one. Got a long, long rule book ahead of you. And good luck, there are plenty of videos out there to explain how it plays. But yeah, just definitely save yourself the headache. Jaws of the Lion is a fairly affordable one. You can get them a lot of times for $30, at least here in the United States. So try that if you like it, then you can go ahead and go into Frosthaven. I don't feel like you would need to play Gloomhaven, you know, Gloomhaven to be able to play Frosthaven. Like while there are some stuff that kind of built on Gloomhaven, there's not enough to feel that you have to play that campaign to be able to play this one. So I do really like that. Um, yeah. I, I think that's it. I think I'm going to get to the point that I'm just going to ramble and just say how much I love the game 500 more times. So you don't want to hear that, right? But anyways, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, just remember to have fun, be present, and be you. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to us. We would love to hear from you. Also, if you find value in our content, please like, comment, or subscribe. Let a friend or family member know that we exist. Help us spread our channel and bring remote gaming to a table near you. Thank you very much, and have a great day.